Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Tatter Talks. So great for you guys to be here tonight. My name is Anton Sandiego. I am the editor-in-chief of Tatter Philippines, and it's so nice. I can see from my screen some familiar names, and thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to our Tatter team around Asia, Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia, Taiwan, China, maybe in China, and um, Great for you guys to join us. Um, today we are, tonight, as you know, we will be speaking to Mr. Nigel Barker, Ms. Pia Wurzbach, and Mr. Jeremy Johnson. We will speak about love, romance, photography, travel, fitness, and more. And of course, we will be taking in your questions. Okay, we won't keep you in suspense any longer because we have a long night ahead and I know you want to hear from these people. So they came out in their respective Tatler covers one in 2015 and one in 2018, and now they are both in one cover. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the hottest couple in the universe, the CEO and founder of Beautiful Destination, the handsome and the man packed with so much as I can see the abs from afar, Jeremy John C. And Miss Universe 2015, our very own the pride of the Philippines, Miss Pia Wurzbach. Hi. Hey. Hi, guys. How are you? How are you? How are you guys? Good evening, Anton. Good. good evening. How are you guys? Yeah, really good. Thank you. Thank you for having us. For sure. Why don't you guys greet each other first? Hi, You're next to each other on screen. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, we're yeah. Different to our normal FaceTime calls. I yeah, know. we got dressed up. For that one. You want to greet the viewers as well, Pia? Why don't you greet the viewers? Um, hi guys. Um, well, we're finally doing this. Um, yeah. Thank you so much for uh, tuning in. I I see that a lot of people are online now and they've been waiting for this. So thank you so much for all your support. Maraming salamat. And Jeremy. Yeah, just echoing the same thing. Uh, we feel so fortunate and grateful about how supportive everyone has been. Um, yeah, thank you so much, guys. We're really looking forward to discussion and to hearing your questions. Yes. Okay, we're going to get let the cat out of the bag. You guys met in London. Yeah. Jeremy, you approached Pia. You mm -hmm. recognize each other because of your respective Tatler covers. Okay, we want to know, where were you? Which play, area in London? How did it happen? Mm -hmm. what, all the details okay well maybe, maybe i'll start then. <laughs> so i before living in new york i lived in london um it was my home for 10 years and uh i saw pia in covent garden uh, it's an area that i'd walked through so many times in the last 10 years uh, an area that i know very very well and uh, when i saw her as you said i, I recognized her instantly and the funny thing is that we had crossed paths um a few times before but never really actually met each other and were properly formally introduced. So I saw her and I was like, listen, I get I get one shot. So I, I ran up to her <laughs> and I all from there. What did you say? I want to know what you said. <laughs> um, 
you know, I think I, I think I, I think I just introduced myself and said, look, my name. Oh, it's, I introduced myself and uh, men mentioned that we had mutual friends in common because I'd been to the Philippines um, yes. a couple of times in the past. Uh, we knew some people in in similar circles, so it wasn't just completely out of the blue. <laughs> and how do you feel that your fans and you know and there are thousands of them they're all rooting for you and they're rooting for the both of you how do you feel about that uh well it's very exciting um uh i'm i'm very happy that um the response has been so good um it just makes things so much easier i'm so happy that everybody's so supportive and um yeah, just thank you so much. Um, it just makes things so much easier when everybody's supportive, everybody's rooting for your relationship, and that everybody wishes you well. Yeah, exactly. Um, Jeremy, there were rumors swelling around on Instagram of your budding relationship. You know, the, the glasses, the, I don't know, where you guys were in Bali, I think. Uh, <laughs> Were you hesitant to make the relationship public? I know you guys are a little bit off because I know we were speaking earlier, Pia yeah. and Jeremy. This, <laughs> this is the first time that you're actually doing this. Yeah. Yeah. And then, it, you, I know you guys are on Zoom days or do, doing all these things, but this is the first time you're doing this with, with all everybody else. Mm -hmm. So are you afraid to make the relationship public? It wasn't so much afraid, I don't think. It was more really wanting to make sure that we invested in each other and got to yeah. know each other and really that the foundation for our whole relationship was built on the two of us really becoming close and understanding our values the things that we cared about the things that we wanted um and on the flip side knowing that uh, obviously people would be interested and people would want to know about us we just felt it was really important that we 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 set a good foundation before we came out and, and did something like this fantastic Pia, you mentioned in the Tatler interview that yes. in Jeremy, yeah, that in Jeremy, I love, I love this actually, this quote, that in Jeremy, you met the male version of yourself. Can you elaborate on this? Uh, yeah, because um, when I when I met Jeremy, we we really clicked right away, and um, we we just talked nonstop, and we found so many things in common, and. It's almost like love at first sight, I think, even wow. though he won't admit that it was love at first sight. Right? <laughs> it was. And um, yeah, so you're right earlier, by the way, that this is kind of w different for us because um, usually when you do an interview as a couple, you're together physically and then it's, yeah. you know, and then you would be in front of us and it wouldn't be like this. So this is kind of new to me. I've never had to do an interview like this. So, so um, yeah, like I'm a little nervous actually. I don't know why. <laughs> we live in funny times, but I'm sure we'll get through this as well. Um, Jeremy, I know you were supposed to come to Manila in March. Uh, you were actually was supposed to speak in Manila House as well. Um, when was the last time you saw each other? Wow. So it would have been, yeah, February, right, baby? Yeah, New York. Yeah. Ooh, that's what you call each other. <laughs> yeah, well, we, well, I call him my love, and then he calls yeah. me baby and other things. <laughs> wow. other thing. oh, this is very important for the Filipinos. You know Pinoys, right? We, we call ourselves yeah. Pinoys. Okay, what Tagalog word do you know? The most important one. Mahal kita. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> all, the, all the important oh. things. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, and um, I also taught him um kilig. He also know what kilig means. I, mean, yeah. um, I know that a lot of people who comment on our page now they say kilig a lot. So I told him, you know what kilig means, right? Like, um, because I do say it to him, like I feel so kilig, or you make me so kilig. So he knows what it means now. So kilig, mahal kita, maganda. Um, what else, babe? Like I. I mean, those are the important ones. Those are the important ones, right? Those are the ones that we try and say to each other. I've known you guys, and I'm I'm killing as well right now because see you guys. I'm killing too, and I'm nervous. Oh my god. Okay, um, Pia, has a long yes. distance and the pandemic interrupt since it's interrupted your relationship. How, how do you feel you can make it stronger? How how do you manage all this? Um, I think it's really important to. You mean like for a relationship or just being yeah, in? If you're long distance and plus the pandemic, you can't see each other. How do you make this relationship strong? 
I think given that, the parameters. I think constant communication is so important. We talk to each other every day, every day. Well, like, walang mintes. Every day we talk to each other. We talk. Sometimes we talk twice a day, and we'll talk for hours. If you know, if he if he didn't have to go to a meeting or to go to work, um, which he still does, by the way, up to now every day, um, we would be talking for hours, and that's just how we bond. We just talk about everything. Um, and I think that's so important, especially for couples that are long distance relationship now, talk to each other every day, check up on each other and talk about the real things too. Don't just like pretend that, oh no, I'm good baby, like nothing's wrong, I'm fine. I mean, we're in the middle of a pandemic and so many things going on in the world right now. So it's really important to be honest and to yes. catch up, um, um, to check on each other, be really honest, yeah. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, you met in London, Hong Kong, Indonesia, then New York mm -hmm. in a span of a year, but it was in Hong Kong on a special day that mm -hmm. Jeremy, you mentioned in the article as well that you wanted to be, this is the moment you wanted to be with Pia. Mm -hmm. Take us to that situation and what made it very special. Um, I think just building on what Pia said, we've we've really invested heavily in communicating with each other right since the very, very beginning and just talking about our feelings, talking about what we're looking for in life. And, you know, I see it as a huge compliment that she thinks that I'm a male version of her because I see how driven and smart and, um, you know, intelligent she is and how much I learn from her and hopefully she learns from me. So I think with Hong Kong, what was so special about that was we just walked around Hong Kong, just talking, really like there was no fancy dinners, there was no, um, you know, shows or, or anything really that you might do in when you're early dating life, we were just walking around and talking. And I, I think we talked, we touched on it in the article, but I remember sitting down in a little park, and we had all these school kids running around us and making noise and, you know, birds in the trees and just being in the middle of nature in the middle of Hong Kong. And just, you know, looking at each other and talking about the things that we wanted and, and realized that they were very similar, you know, realized we had shared values, realized that we both, um, you know, we both wanted the same thing. And, and then I, you know, it was love at first sight. I was like, right, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. A, but yeah, I think this should be a movie, don't you think? You should guys be in a movie together. Right? Like, yeah, I mean, the, I mean, the way we met and the way it all happened. And um, Jeremy was right. There were moments before that we almost met. There was one event a few, while I was Miss Universe living in New York. Um, there was an event by Philippine Tourism. I was there as a guest. And then, oh no, they were there earlier. And then they were leaving. And then somebody said, no, wait, wait, because um, Miss Universe is coming. And then, but they left anyway. So we didn't <laughs> that night. Um, but everything happens for a reason, right? And I guess we were meant to meet now and at this point in our lives where um, we're so much more, I guess, mature and more ready for a, like a mature, serious relationship. So, and we both want the same things. Like Jeremy said, um, he is the male version of me, I really feel. Like I used to tell myself before, I don't think I'll ever like, I used to tell myself this before, honestly, I don't think I'll ever meet the guy who is as driven and as busy as me. And then that would be a problem because then, you know, um, you get a lot of misunderstanding in relationship when, when that happens. And so I wasn't really looking for anyone when I met him, but it happened and I'm so happy. We're so in love. <laughs> You know, I'm so happy for the both of you. I'm really, like one of your fans, I'm rooting for you as well. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of people also want to know, uh, I got this question is, this is the cheekiest question, is where and when was the first kiss? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> it was Hong Kong. It was, it was Hong Kong. Hong Kong. Uh, yeah. It was Hong Kong. Wow. How and was he, it like? <laughs> not me. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was in Hong Kong. Babe, you should tell the story. Be a okay, gentleman. okay, okay. So, so we'd, had, <laughs> we'd had we'd had the day just walking around and spending time together, and we um, we were staying in different places, but relatively close to each other. And it was just capping off the day as we as we went home and we were going back to our respective hotels. And um, yeah, I, I I gave her a kiss goodnight, 
and uh, and then and then we left things, and then it just it ended up ending a perfect day, knowing that the next day we were going to see each other again, and that sort of little you know you know what it's like that little awkward bit at the beginning. Yeah. Should you shouldn't you? Is this the right moment? Um, and everything I think with Hong Kong just fell, it fell into place because we spent so much time talking to each other and trying to understand each other and realizing how much respect we had for each other and that we were on the same page. And yeah, just the night, the night ended in the perfect way. Went back to each other's hotels and knew we were seeing each other in the morning. So yeah, that's how it happened. Yeah. That is fantastic. It's a killing moment. Can you say killing, Jeremy? It was, it was a killing moment for sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we're going to go on. And what was it like to do your first big shoot together? Oh, oh! I, by the way, I want to share with you guys something. So before this, I, I would need, have to get, get my phone in a bit. I'll ask uh, my cousin Charity to go get it for me. But we had an, another, a different idea for our reveal at the beginning. So we yeah. had this like funny photo in Bawa. Remember that, babe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we took this really, like we made some funny faces and we took pictures. And then we said, what if this became our like <laughs> together, just us being goofy. And then one day, um, Jeremy texted me and he said that he got in contact with Nigel and with you and that you guys were were game to put us on the cover. And I mean, we said yes right away. I mean, who, uh, this is Tatler, this is Tatler Philippines. And I'm really happy that you guys were very open to featuring us and putting us on the cover. Um, of the magazine, so thank it's you so much. Pleasure, my goodness. So um, we're going to show some scenes of uh, some photos of the shoot. Like this is one of my favorite shots from the shoot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's at the Equinox Hotel. Uh, it, yeah, yeah, amazing, amazing. I mean, we're going to speak to Nigel shortly, but yeah, he's he's a really good friend. He's an amazing man, uh, super talented. So we were very lucky that he. Uh, I know he's done a lot of work with you, Anton, with with Tatler yes. for a while. But uh, yeah, it just it worked out. It worked out perfectly. It's funny. I I, we're not. Yeah. We don't smile in any of these photos. It's very like. Yeah, serious. I know. <laughs> but but you can see hopefully from this interview that we're always smiling with each other and we're always, like, exactly. Yeah, so. I think it's supposed to be sexy and sultry yeah. and mysterious. But here, I want to know, Jeremy, what were you thinking in this photo? <laughs> 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 hmm, I'm trying to think. I mean. Smelling my hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. Smelling my hair. <laughs> and you know, what were you thinking? Um, cause the cause um when we were thinking of the the shoot, um, the idea was for it to have this Bond feel. So yeah. I dress up as a Bond girl and he's Bond, and then so it's a bit serious. And it was around winter too at that time. Mm -hmm. so, I know. It's so February. It was, the yeah. setting, I guess, the mood. So we wanted to kind of like be serious, but in between, you know, in between shoots, we would like laugh and laugh and you know be around with each other. And yeah, yeah. speaking about uh, Nigel Barker, we're going to bring in one of our favorite Tatler photographers, the dashing, handsome, and noted international photographer, my good friend, Mr. Nigel Barker. Well, hi, everybody. Hi. Great to see you. Good morning, good evening. Yes, can you say something to our viewers? Absolutely. How wonderful to, to speak to you all again. You know, that, that obviously, the Philippines is one of my favorite places in the world. Uh, one of my favorite places to photograph, but also my favorite people to photograph. Um, and super, super excited to be chatting with you. And how much fun has it been the past few days just to be communicating back and forth with so many people who are in love with this wonderful couple and what an opportunity I had to photograph them. So I'm excited to talk to you about it. Exactly. You know, like you were saying earlier that you love the Philippines. What are what are the most memorable experiences you've had in the in the Philippines and Manila in particular? Well, I mean, you know, obviously with you, Anton, going over there and, and um, doing these wonderful photo shoots that we've had to do, these incredible cover shoots. Um, you know, the, the thing about the Philippines, and, and, and I'll say this, as someone who travels the world, someone who's been very privileged and had the opportunity to travel extensively uh, throughout Asia, but also throughout Europe and everywhere else, um, you, you know, there are many, many, many amazing countries in the world. There's no doubt about it. But what really separates a country and what separates the Philippines are the people. And, yeah. you, you know, you can have a gorgeous place, you can have an incredible facade or building or history, 
but the people are what makes the difference. And, and that's what the Philippines is so special for, in my opinion. It's the hospitality and the charm and everyone I photographed uh, and to the people who helped me, the people who did the production, all aspects of it. And, you know, everybody I met invited me to their house. Everybody I met <laughs> yeah. wanted to give me something to eat. Everybody <laughs> was trying to feed me. Everyone was looking after my crew. You know, so it's just the most, those, those are the sort of memories that you take back where you're like, you know, I could live there kind of thing. You know, there aren't many places where you're like, I could, be, I could live there, you know, so. Yeah. Nigel, we're going to give you a, a, a short homage of the, all the Tatler covers that you've done for us since actually 2007. I was telling you earlier, I was only 12, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> wow, this. this is our first uh, time we actually met was we, with our first uh, Filipino supermodel, Anna Baile. And mm -hmm. you knew her um, through Georgie Dinkong, a common, my friend, who introduced me to Anna and Anna knew you. And that's how we, we, we kept in touch, got in touch. That's right. Right? right, and then, then you came for the first time to Manila in for this shoot called the Twelve Women with Kit Sobel and Ina Yalo, one of my good friends. And you photographed twelve women, and these are some of their photos from Margarita, Carol, Garcia, uh, Vicky Zubiri, Mary Chris, Kathy de Guzman, and then in two thousand seven you photographed another pride of the Philippines, Miss Josie Notori. You this was in your this was done in her home. You remember yeah. that? Very well, very well. What a charming, amazing woman. I mean, again, this is a, she's an international talent and someone who's very, very famous the world over. So it was a real privilege. Yes, and then in 2009, remember we did Tori Birch in her beautiful home in uh, Fifth Avenue, I think, was it? Or the, I uh, do. I, one of my great stories about that particular shoot is that obviously, you know, Tori Birch is, is again, the household name and, yeah. you know, has, stores on, on the high street under her name, Tori Birch. And yet, while we were there, at the end of the shoot, she came in sort of barefoot, having been in the kitchen, having made us cookies and, yeah. and, and, and put them down on my entire, and it was this sort of very, and of course, you know, people are people and people are human, but oftentimes when someone becomes so famous, like with someone like Pierre with 10 million followers, you can't believe just how hospitable and normal and down to earth she yeah. is, they are. And that is off, that for me is always the, the nicest thing. And you, I think you also find people who have that kind of um, uh, you know, uh, empathy. You know. Exactly. And then um, 2011, you came back to Manila for the glam issue. This is Heart Evangelista, um, beautiful Heart Evangelista, Georgina Wilson and um, Celine Lopez on the cover. I mean, look at all these beautiful women, ridiculous. Thank goodness! Yeah. Thank goodness! Thank goodness that you 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 let us you know the world see them on the on your magazine covers. People would have no, <laughs> no idea that you were, you were hiding so many amazing amazingly talented women in the exactly. Philippines. And then in 2015, you came back to Manila and uh, photographed uh, Vicky Bello for her 25th anniversary. My good friend Vicky, and this was done in the Soler Theater with some of the most major stars in. The Philippines from Derek Ramsey, Sarah Geronimo, Matteo Goticelli, Piolo Pasqual, my good friend Tim is there, Lucy Gomez, um, Isa Calzado, Beldaza. So this was such a great shoot, right? Um, it was uh, an yeah. epic, epic, epic shoot, fantastic location. You know, one could have been anywhere from sort of, I don't know, the Opera House in Paris to you know, the, the Grand Palazzo in Italy or something to, but we were in the Philippines and it just shows too that what, you know, what you have going on there. And that's one of the wonderful things too about photography too, is that we get to showcase your talent and your locations as well. And, and by the way, I mean, I think we're, we're high, we're, we're well due a photo shoot again in the Philippines, sure. but I want to go on location. I want to see the countryside next, Anton. Okay. I'll hold, we'll, hold you to it. We'll plan something. And then of course, 2016, yeah, Miss Pia Wirtz back in New York. Uh, this was done at the Baccarat Hotel. I know. I mean, the, the Baccarat almost pales in comparison to the beautiful Pia. But <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> it's nice, <laughs> And then, of course, 2020, we come full circle to Jeremy and Pia on the cover. You what know, fun and this was. So, and, so yeah, just Pia, a little yeah. inside moment here 
you know, I, I will take credit because I, I like a little, I'll take a little credit from these beautiful people. But um, I, I got wind that there was, there was a relationship that, there, that, that something was happening. Someone told me somewhere that there was a relationship. So I decided to do a little sniffing around. And I, I, I remember calling Jeremy and s- sort of saying, Jeremy, are you dating Pip? And, and he was very kind of like, well, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, look, when and if it becomes public, I need to be the person you talk to because I would love to be able to, let's do this properly and, and showcase it. And then I called Anton very quickly and said, Anton, I might have a scoop. <laughs> And I, I was busy, sort of felt like I was a matchmaker, but through photography. And, but the wonderful thing is, is that we're all friends and, 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 they, and they did a very smart thing, too. It's obviously one can go to the press very quickly and people are very hungry for this kind of stuff. But to, for them to be very mature about their relationship and to take their time and to let it sink in and to fall in love, ultimately. And exactly. It shows in the pictures. Yes, they're you steamy. It, you but, saw it um, your eyes. And for Thea and Jeremy, how was it like working with Nigel? Well, first of all, I want to say thank you so much, Nigel, for agreeing to shoot um, Jeremy and I for the cover. Um, it's always a pleasure working with you, and Filipinos love you. Um, and I know that you're known worldwide and very much respected. So I'm really happy that you agreed to um, work with us again and work with me again. Thank you. Um, so I, yeah, I just wanted to like let everybody know how grateful um i really am that um nigel agreed to do this shoot with us and of course anton you too like thank you so much for putting us on cover too thank you oh, you're so welcome our, pre- our pleasure jeremy yeah i mean nigel and i have a, a long-standing friendship and uh it's like a you know bigger brother type situation where you know he gives me lots of abuse and we joke around and it's always fun when we do stuff together. <laughs> he got me on to uh, a show he was doing a little while back, we did that together. Um, you know, he's also close with my brother, and you know, it's just it's just a real pleasure. It's not work. It's just um, you know, building on our friendship. So yeah, I really appreciate it, mate. Absolutely, no, my pleasure, my pleasure. What fun! And you know, he's far too good looking. So I, I, have, to, I have to do. I try my hardest to dumb it down in the photographs, but it's not easy. It's not easy. You know, luckily he's he's, he's, he's dating Pierre, so that was the only thing that helped balance it all out. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah he's, made, he's definitely met his match. I mean, I don't know what the personalities may be, but certainly, you know, looks wise, Pierre, I'm afraid, I think she still has you there, Jeremy. She, <laughs> she, does. she does, she does. Okay, guys, we're going to move on to some serious questions about. Oh, sorry. Wow. Okay, we have some behind the scenes photos. Oh, nice. cool. My oh, friends at the back. Look at all these photos. This is done again. You said you mentioned Jeremy. Uh, yeah, Jeremy in Hudson Yards and Equinox Hotel. Yeah, I mean, you can see the photo on the right there. It, it was tipping down with rain. And so we were yeah. we were trying to find a way to, I mean, obviously Nigel's the man at making it look professional. We're trying to find a way to make it look the way that it ended up coming out in the shots when actually there was rain and wind and peel mm. was freezing literally yeah, freezing. So cool. let me tell you a funny story though about that picture <laughs> on the right yeah that when when they arrived that one there on the right where she has the white jacket and, and jeremy yes. has the umbrella so yeah we're there and meanwhile security is very very tight on the ground um and they don't allow photo shoots in the vessel it's actually quite difficult to do and we could only shoot from before it opened, which was before eight o'clock in the morning. So it was very early. Jeremy and I had been photographing, already taking pictures at six o'clock in the morning onwards. So we'd been up since five, but we were there and the security detail was around. And I looked at them and I looked at these guys and I thought, hmm, I might have something up my sleeve that was gonna help us on this shoot. And I said, do you know who I'm shooting? And they looked at me like <laughs> nonplus, nor did they particularly care, it seemed. And then from the distance, Pierre emerged from the hotel. And I saw this one security guard, literally his whole body language changed. He looked and he looked at me and went, is that Pierre? Is that, is that <laughs> Queen P? And I said, it is. And he was like, oh my God. And he quickly radioed in and then came back and he said, at the end of, at the end of that shot, he said to me, Mr. Barker, if there is any location that you would like to shoot at today, you call me directly and I will give you direct access to anywhere you want. So oh my our goodness. golden card to making the whole shoot work was the fact that I had Pierre with me. So Pierre, you need to be with me and work on sets with me in New York, please. <laughs> exactly. I would love to work with you again. Yes, please. Okay. Amazing. And we have other photos to show. Um, after this show shot, there's a wow. sexy shot of Pierre. Yeah, yeah amazing. And so we, next were, we were photographing at the top. 
top of the edge, which is the reason why we're wearing those special jackets, because we were very, very oh, high yeah. up. You can't yeah. really see, it looks like a whiteout, but we're on top of the world. Yeah. Wow. Very and cool. The next photo. This is the bar of the Hudson. Uh, the equinox. Yeah, the Equinox Hotel, that one was, I think. It's so funny seeing these back. It just brings back so many good memories. But, yeah. you know, again, you see how serious we are. We're always looking at each other. It's very intense. We're not smiling. And you can <laughs> from the interview that it's not how it how it is with us normally. Yeah. And, and I can see Chrissy there, uh, Nigel, your your wife, your beautiful yes, wife. Well, yeah. you, know, you can also see how many people are there. I mean, it's what, what, one of the fun, fun things about behind the scenes photographs from fashion shoots are, you, 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 what you see, the viewer sees, is what I see, which is a very intimate moment. And we create stories, right? So as a fashion yeah. photographer, it's about an editorial, it's about a narrative. And in this particular instance, yes, obviously they're in love and they smile and they laugh and we get that. But for a story, one is trying to create something which is, you know, which was perhaps not just about their personalities, but much more about the, the, the power of a woman, the power of a man, the fact that they were equals and that, that one isn't better than the other or stronger or more powerful than the other in this particular instance too. And that, so it was the casting of the situation wasn't one to have one cowering to the other or, or one following the other or one chasing the other. It was to have them both as this, these sort of dominant um, people in the picture. And at the same time, it was not angry. It was with a, a power and a confidence and an allure and a char charisma. And that's what comes through. And you'll see in Pierre's eyes, when she looks at the camera, she pierces straight through the lens and she looks exactly. like she's looking at you. And I think that's yeah. why these are so powerful is because every single person who sees it thinks that Pierre is of course looking at them. Um, well, at least that's in my mind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jeremy. Yeah. We have a, a, a behind the scenes video as well to show. Very short, Let's. why don't we cue this? Okay. Soon. Wow. wow, wow, guys. Wow. I know what this is. This is great. <laughs> Whoa! What is that? Oh, what is this? What is this? Whoa. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you so much. That's really nice. That's all from uh, Nigel's um, camera, right? Yeah, Nigel? yeah those are all my, those are my BTS um, videos just clipped together. A lot, lot of fun. I mean, you know, one of those shots is not is not in the story. In fact, yeah, I know that Jeremy and Pierre have some uh, additional pictures, <laughs> as does Anton, which no doubt will make it out there. And, and yes, you know, he, we did put him in a shower because it got so hot, I decided to try and cool him down at minus 200 degrees, but it hardly worked. <laughs> we did, we did. That was the, the cryo, um, the cryo. The cryo uh, yeah, yeah, in, in the Equinox Hotel. Yeah, we were in, actually inside the hotel. Of course, you had to show your abs. We had to see some skin, Jeremy. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we'll post it one day. Yeah, it's actually, it's so actually in the shots. magazine. It's actually in the yeah. magazine. It's oh. in the uh, yeah. Oh, if you okay. check it out, you check it out again. It's it, it's there. Um, okay. okay, we're going to move on to some serious questions about COVID nineteen and your careers in the industry. Nigel, for you, as a photographer, how has this pandemic changed how you work and how are you adapting? Well, I mean, right now there really is not any regular photo shoots, so all production has had ground to a halt but that being said things are beginning to shape up I mean I, we got booked for a photo shoot yesterday um, actually so um, as right. we start <laughs> these are all pictures of me but anyway yes <laughs> you know, it, I, I, I get I, you know it's it, it has changed it will change um, I, you know I my next shoot that I have coming up which is in a week's time in Michigan I think um, I'm gonna be taking a much smaller crew with me uh the people want less people on the on the set uh we're gonna you know there's there are all these sort of things we're gonna have to figure out as far as how close and far people can be from one another whether people are you know but i you know there's at the same time there's a risk involved and we're gonna have to deal with it um luckily yeah. most of the people i deal with are on the younger side so they're not really high risk individuals um and that just happens to be my particular side of the industry but mm -hmm. photography is quite intimate with hair and makeup artists so i, I know that a lot of models are actually learning to try and do their own makeup or and things like that and 
Um, one shoot that I, that's rather interesting that I was asked to do during the pandemic was one where I was asked to sort of direct a photo shoot from afar, from a phone, and have the person photograph themselves with me creative direct the shoot. So people have got very creative, very unusual ways to try and continue working. I mean, ultimately, we always find a way. Yes, for sure. And uh, you were saying something about like, do you think people are be wearing hazmats and masks and I mean, all the gloves? I mean, how is that? I mean, the makeup be artists and the stylists and things like that will probably do that kind of thing. I mean, obviously, someone like myself won't necessarily wear, you know, the yeah. gloves and stuff because I need to be able to feel the, the, the camera, the bits and pieces on my camera are sensitive to my fingertips. But that being said, um, you know, one will just take whatever precautions one needs. And, you know, ultimately, there are risks concerned on some levels, I guess. But, you know, at the same time, one, you, you, you know, you have to get past it and you have to get through it. And there are always certain risks to anything one does, you know, even if you're climbing on, you know, very tall buildings. I mean, you look at Jeremy on the cover of your magazine. What's he doing? What's <laughs> he on the back of a horse, you know, rearing in front of the pyramids? I mean, exactly, that's a risk. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So talking about photo shoots, I know Pia, you you know, um, you're always uh, used to being in photo shoots and modeling and all these things. Do you miss it? I mean, I know there's no shoots happening in the last four months. Um, yeah, I do miss it. Actually, I'm not used to not working. I am. A, I'm a workaholic, and I work every day. I'm used to like going at it every day. So this has been like kind of like a forced break. Um, but I've been making myself productive every day. I'm still working on my causes. Um, and even though I don't get to go out to do shoots anymore, I still have a lot of work here at home. Um, I do have, a, I was filming a movie. I was in the middle of fil finishing a movie when quarantine started. So that's been put on hold. It's yeah. not canceled, just been put on hold. We'll continue shooting when um, the situation gets better. But like what Nigel mentioned, it's going to be different now when we go back to set because we need less people um, and we also would need to be tested before we can yeah. enter the set. So there's going to be a lot of precautions, but I think it's for the safety of everyone. I do miss going to work, but um, I'm also making myself productive and using this time to really, you know, just you know, realign myself, take care of myself, focus on my health and my well-being. And I think yeah. that's what um, everybody's been trying to do during quarantine anyway. And, and what do you think is going to be the um, future of beauty pageants? Um, well, I think right now the best thing is to just postpone the competition. Um, although I heard of some local competitions here in the Philippines like Miss Earth, they want to do an online pageant. So I'm really curious to how they're going to be able to pull that off. Um, I think it's possible, but just for the safety of everyone, maybe just to postpone everything. Um, yeah. I will see. I, for sure, the girls this year, whoever are the reigning queens, they'll have the longest reign ever because <laughs> your, your turnover will be pushed back for another year for sure. Yeah. And Pia, you, you are an ambassador of UN AIDS, but have also been raising funds and medical supplies with your group of friends. Can you tell us about that project? Yeah. So we started this up during the first week of quarantine and I'm living here with my cousin Charity. And just one day we, we you know, we asked ourselves, like, we can, what else can we do? There must be something else we can do. Um, let's use our resources. So then I asked my friends first about um, some suppliers. I got a hold of a Supplier. I ordered some masks myself first, and then when I got the logistics done already, I got that cleared out. Then I started taking in donations from other people. My initial goal was to raise six hundred thousand, which yeah. is about twenty-five thousand masks. But I exceeded that with help from everyone. Um, so we went over a million. So we got forty-four thousand face masks to thirty-seven hospitals. So I'm okay. very happy about that. Yeah, and. I, and um, because of that fundraising too, we caught um, um, WWF Philippines took notice and they reached out to me and asked me if I wanted to push some of their fundraising campaigns. So of course I said yes right away. Um, they're the biggest or if not, they're one of the biggest if not the biggest in the world, biggest NGO yeah. in the world and it's an honor that they reached out to me. So um, 
Um, I've been working with them. I've been trying to push for some fundraising for them. Three campaigns, actually. Every week, I post a new one. So for people who are watching right now on my social media platforms, you'll see all the details there on how to donate and where your um, donations are going to go. Fantastic. Jeremy, we go to you. Um, the question at everyone's mind, travel. Mm. I love to travel. You love to travel. What can you say about the future of travel? Yeah, it's challenging, to be very honest. Uh, the industry is in a tough situation. Uh, we, with beautiful destinations, we're working predominantly with governments and tourism boards, um, but also the airline industry, the hotel industry, uh, tour operators. And the, the reality is that we, we right now, should not be uh, traveling. You know, we've got to wait until we know clarity on the uh, rates of infections in the countries, how they open up. Uh, there is definitely a responsibility on all of us to make sure that we're being safe and we're being healthy. Uh, and I think the majority of countries around the world that are recognizing how critical travel is to their economies are taking the steps they need to take to make sure that um, you know when travel does come back, they do it in the right way. So I think the short term outlook is is challenging. There's there's no yeah. doubt about that. Um, yeah. I mean, we do have a little bit of good news just before just before lockdown. A beautiful destination has actually signed a new big partnership with the Philippines Department of Tourism, which we're so proud and so excited about. So when, wow. the, yeah, when, the, when, when things pass and when things are right uh, to, to come back again, the team will be coming back to the Philippines. We'll be working again um, with Secretary Boner and, and the tourism team we love and, uh, you know, doing all we can to, to start promoting the Philippines again. So there is light at the end of the tunnel. So For sure. Cool. There were beautiful photos from, from your Instagram. Uh, from the photos that earlier of beautiful destinations actually which is 13 plus million followers how is that what is what's happening there to the uh yeah so 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 good and bad i think the good is that people are spending a lot more time uh obviously because they're at home on social media on streaming services yeah. they're turning to digital platforms to connect like we are now so we're seeing people spending more time there and certainly from our the media side of our business where we share content and we use our social channels uh, to tell positive impact stories about travel. Uh, that continues. I think now more so than ever, it's critically important for us to keep pushing that that mission, that vision that we stand for, which is that um, whilst we can't travel now, we don't, we shouldn't forget that travel is a force for good, you know, that really getting out into the world and connecting with people and understanding their cultural differences and recognizing that it doesn't matter, you know, the color of your skin or where you come from or all of those things which we know really come together when you meet people and you travel that's we're going to keep pushing that message and certainly i've been doing it on my personal channels and we'll continue to do it on beautiful destinations and and, and can you explain about digital tourism yeah so it's really this understanding that more and more of the experiences that we're used to having uh physically just cannot happen large groups of people don't make sense a lot of the tourism economy has been built around traveling to a destination and going and seeing a local attraction where there are hundreds, if not thousands of people collecting in one place. Uh, we're seeing more and more innovative destinations creating digital experiences of those experiences. And so, you know, I'm sure the listeners have heard about, <clears throat> you know, the Olympics being pushed back, uh, yeah. Expo, which was going to be a huge um, celebration of culture and science. That's also been pushed back. Uh, these, these are things which were physical experiences, which now will be translated into uh, video tours, potentially virtual reality tours, uh, social and live experiences. Th those are all things which I think are incredibly positive so we can keep people excited and enjoying travel content, but doing it in a, in a responsible way. Yeah. Um, Pia mentioned about WWF, and I know you're an ambassador of WWF. Yes. How did this relationship start? Oh, wow. So, look, I'm very, I'm very, very passionate about the work that they do. Uh, really, they have for decades now been uh, been the leader in, uh, you know, taking care of the environment and taking care of the planet. And a lot of people think that they just focus on animals, but really they have a holistic view on everything that needs to happen for the conservation of the world. And all of these things interact. Taking care of our natural environments, which then takes care of the the things that live in it is, is is the future of our industry and certainly something that I feel I can lend my voice to and give our platforms to to raise awareness of uh, something I'm very proud of but also yeah. I think it's not really a it's a choice it's not a choice we we, ha we have to do this we have to get behind sustainable tourism we have to get behind sustainable ways of, of living our lives and I think um, more and more people are, are recognizing that and certainly a younger millennial generation who are mobile and social first are seeing the importance of standing for causes and getting behind things 
uh, like taking care of the environment. And that's, uh, that's incredibly encouraging and organizations like WWF are at the very, very front of that. Great. Um, we're going to talk about life in lockdown. Because of lockdown, what's something you have become an expert on, Mr. Barker? <laughs> um, probably making cocktails. I hate to tell you, um, <laughs> my, my cocktail making ability is is, is risen to whole, all new heights. Um, in fact, uh, I've just relaunched my um, podcast, Shaken and Stirred, which yes. Jeremy and his brother uh, yeah, yeah. Tom have both appeared on in the past. But um, I do, we, you know, English do love a good cocktail at the right hour. Of course, it's five o'clock somewhere. As we know, it was eight o'clock in the morning here, but it was eight o'clock in the evening with you. Um, <laughs> but um, we know we have a Bloody Mary for the morning. So there you go. There's always something <laughs> for someone. Um, exactly. But um, yes, I've, I've become, you know, I've got all my tools now. I think I have everything you can imagine when it comes to a, making cocktails. I feel like a surgeon uh, and uh, a very well-stocked bar. But, um, but don't worry, it's all in moderation, my friend. <laughs> and Pia, what have you become an expert on? Well, I've um, I've I'm, I've tried everything now because uh, um, I've tried learning how to play the ukulele. I used to I uh, culinary, so I started baking again a few weeks ago. Um, I started gaming again, just a little bit, and then just everything, everything that I used to lo love doing as a kid. I've started tapping into those like little skills or like just just things that I love love to do as a kid, like watercoloring, playing an instrument, playing games, and yeah. So it really um, what happens in quarantine is it forces you to be a creative, like really creative yeah. with how, how you um, make use of your time. Yeah, and Jeremy, you. Yeah, so so I think echoing Pia, just being creative about the time, I've been able to spend uh, a lot of time on on personal development stuff. I found that uh, being working from home has given me hours back in the day that I can spend on reading or listening to podcasts or watching talks from people, and and certainly I've been able to expand, you know, my my areas of interest more than I had back in the past. And really, there's no excuses when you have the whole day at home to you know clear an hour or two to read something or learn something new. So that that's actually been probably the biggest the biggest positive that I found out of out of quarantine. And then combining that with work, and then as Pia said, we we make time for each other every day. So that that kind of routine, uh, I I feel has been healthy and kind of helped me get through get through this. Yeah, has also been really helpful with um, helping me get into fitness. I have to say, thank you so much. <laughs> um, I've been focused with my health lately. I've been working out every day and he's also been guiding me with um, the kind of like workouts I should be doing and the food that I should be eating. So I all owe it all to him. Um, yeah. uh, so yeah. all that yeah. kind of, like he really guides me through it every day. So um, those are the things that we, we love to do. So for couples out there that are in a long distance relationship, like maybe you can teach each other something. You don't have to physically be together to learn from each other. Jeremy and I talk to each other every day and I learn so much from him. He teaches me so many things that I don't know much about. So I think that's what's most important. Is even if you're not physically together, you're still communicating and learning. Yeah, and speaking about, oh, go ahead, Jeremy, you wanna say something? No, I was just going to say it's it's structuring out that time where we really invest in each other. Uh, and I think, as Pia was saying, anyone that is in a long distance relationship, or, or even if you just can't see your, your partner because of the the lockdown, uh, putting it in place that structured time it has helped us so much. And yes, we do speak every day, um, but also we make sure that weekends are you know special date nights. And we we talked about it in the article where we really make the effort to cook and have a meal together and sit down and. You know, talk to each other about the the good things and the bad things. And again, Pia touched on it earlier. But um, you know, you have ups and downs. It's completely normal. Yeah. She might have a great day, and I have a, a bad day or difficult day in the office. And she's there for me, and she supports me. And being able to talk through it with her, and the days when she is um, helping me, and she's being strong, and I and I need that, she helps lift me up. And then and then vice versa, when she's down, I can be there for her. So it's worked. It's worked well. Wow, I'm sure a lot of people are inspired. You were talking about fitness. Mm -hmm. um what's gonna happen in the fitness industry uh i know you guys are go to the dog pound a lot uh nigel and jeremy right <laughs> well jeremy no but Jer jeremy's been invited <laughs> but he, he has his own thing he's a big equinox guy but i yes i have oh, a, 
a gym called the, the, the Dog Pound and the fitness in general. I mean, there's no doubt that the world of fitness has been taken back home. I mean, I think yeah. one of the big things about the quarantine and, and people um, having to stay home, it, it does not mean that fitness has been put on the back burner. It's just been taken back into the house, back into the home. People are doing it and are, are sort of learning to do online courses, online training um, and digital platforms. Uh, and, and digital online studios and what have you are going to be very much the way of the future. And I think to Jeremy's point earlier, talking about diet and nutrition, that's so key. And I think understanding that aspect is, is and learning more about health and uh, learning more about your diet and is, is just as important as fitness and, and having a well-rounded. But Jeremy is certainly far more eloquent when it comes to these things than I am. <laughs> yeah. Did you see those photos, Nigel? Oh, wait, what, 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 yes. and Jeremy. oh my goodness and jeremy's a beast with that mask that he uses i swear <laughs> that is crazy yeah. I, mean, I i walk here in bgc where i live and i wear a mask and i like i can't breathe and you yeah. exercise with that mask for like an hour how long do you exercise with that mask yeah, so it does. It does vary. I think. I think to Nigel's point, it's trying to find different ways to make things work for you at, at home. So you know, if I if I train with the mask, I might do a run or do a, a short weight session. But with with Peter and I, we've been able to find ways to um to push each other on different things, and it, it is a really good bonding experience to be able to do some of this health stuff together and find ways to motivate each other and push each other and and actually make it fun and enjoyable. And I know when people reach out to us or they comment about the things that we're doing. They uh, they're, they're starting to realize the importance of of being healthy and making sure you eat the right things and making sure you stay active and that helps obviously with your physical health which is critical but just as important um, is is your mental health and and exactly, yeah. here really stepping forward and taking a leadership position sharing information about how to stay mentally strong and and things that you can do to to improve that and you know I have a lot of respect for her for for doing that. Okay, we I want to know because I do this all the time is what do you eat on your cheat day? Chocolate. Jeremy, chocolate. chocolate, you're a chocolate person, Pia? Ice cream, uh, pandesal, ube pandesal. Oh and you, Nigel, you? Uh, uh, you said cheat day. I, I, I thought maybe it was, the, it was the opposite way around. It's called workout day. And cheat week. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I'm not. I'm not all young and pretty like these guys are anymore. I'm not having to, quite have to worry. Being on the other side of the camera, it's a little different, Anton, as one knows. But um, I, I like to do things. That, you know, I've got kids, so I like to do things yes. like pancakes. Pancakes has become a, a bit of a one for me. But I, I find ways to try and make it, mix it up and make it interesting. So almond pancakes and you know all the different bits and pieces. That's. I would love to try almond. I never had that. <laughs> yes. Okay. I'll send you the recipe. Okay. Uh, a question before we go to the question. Uh, a qu last question before we go to the other question for the viewers. A question for all of you is: What have you learned about yourself, about the world during the pandemic, and how do you move forward? So why don't we start with Nigel? Well, I mean, look. In all seriousness, I mean, you know, I, we're having two small children. I've got a fourteen-year-old boy and an eleven-year-old girl, Jack and Jasmine, and you, you know, obviously, the importance of family becomes even more apparent in these sorts of situations. And you realize the fragility of of the world and the questions that are being asked by young minds. And it's a it's certainly a scary time for them. And as a father, you're there to try and both protect them and look after them and offer them guidance but you yourself also yes. don't have all the answers right so you know you're, this is the first time for perhaps me and for many people to go through what's happening in the world right now and, and it's on a very large level so i think one of the the great sort of silver linings of this is the sort of bringing together of family and the the the, the great time we've spent together the stopping and smelling the roses realizing yes. what we have right in front of us you know and talking and listening is so important and you know and, and and being able to actually slow the world down you know i felt yeah. that everything has been on such a roller coaster that in many ways that roller coaster has, has come to a bit of a standstill and that was a, a wonderful thing for us so you know going forward i wish to maintain some of that steadiness i wish yeah. to maintain some of the, the the questioning that's going on and, and and we look at the world right now and obviously everyone's familiar with the things and the riots and the civil unrest in new york and the world over um because of george floyd and you know we we ultimately wanted to make change in the world 
and mm. we have to make proper change and not just talk about it and you know and react but actually have a physical change in the world and so that is something that i've been talking to my kids about and and they realize that they have power, that they can vote and they can make a difference. And so there's a lot of wonderful things that I hopefully will come out of a lot of pain and anguish. Yes, for sure. Amen to that. Pia? Um, one thing I learned during quarantine is that um, we, like, I noticed that some of my problems before I used to magnify a lot and I realized that they're not really so big they're like i shouldn't make a big deal out of it like um you know like for example traffic traffic would stress me out <laughs> before and then now that i think about it like really like that used to bother me and i mean and even with um just looking at my room and my closet i look at like so much shoes and bags and i realize like i don't need all of this so um i just realized so many things that i don't really need anymore or i never really needed so um and I also realized that um, it's possible to work from home. It's possible to do your workout at home. There's a lot of things that you can do from home. Mm -hmm. um, I also learned that um, after this, I'm never gonna take for granted the time that I spend with my family, with my friends, even yes. the hard times. I'm gonna cherish all of that now because I feel like this has been the longest um, since I last saw anyone. So um, yeah. I learned that um, I used to make a big deal out of the little things first. Um, mm -hmm. Material things are not really that important anymore. Um, and then that um, we should never take things for granted. I think those are just some of the things that I learned. Yeah. Well said. Mr. John C. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo both of what the guys said. I think it's uh, it's funny, Pia asked me this question last week, you know, what are you learning from quarantine and, and what do we take from it? And we talk about that kind of stuff because it's it's been really nice to, sh to share that. I think very, very personally for me, I've not really had uh, the ability in the past to share some of this stuff and being able to do that with Pia has been huge for me. I've, I've really, really appreciated it. I think it's a big part of our relationship in the way that we communicate with each other and the way that we're there for each other. So the learning for me is really to, um, to be able to open up and i think that's in large part to the way uh you know peer is and the respect i have for her but as it then plays out into to the rest of the world uh look I, i've said this for a very very long time i fundamentally believe that we are better when we are together and uh mm -hmm. everything we see from what's happening around the world today it's that we cannot lose sight of that that yes. uh you know changes will happen around the world and ultimately if we want to move society forward and we want good things to happen we have to be able to respect each other and put aside these differences and the world and the opportunities for all of us only become better when we respect and understand each other and uh i'm really really hoping uh to nigel's point that um you know we we you know people vote and and take the decisions and stand up for the things that they think is right and uh and we have a communication and, and a dialogue about it and and we all move forward from it so it's challenging because you have the, the combination of civil unrest with 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 corona and and being locked yeah. down home and that's challenging for everybody and i know that everybody is facing uh a different situation but um you know you have to believe that it can get better and that you can take steps yourself to to try and make it better so that's that's really the main thing that i think i'd take away amazing all beautiful answers so we are going to go to our question and answer. We're past one hour. We're going to stretch this a little bit. Um, so first question from our audience, from Sean Fitzpatrick. Hey, Sean. <laughs> you? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> a trusted inside story says have revealed Jeremy's penchant for powder <laughs> onesies. What was Peter's reaction when Jeremy wore this on the beach? <laughs> yeah so so sean sean is a is a friend of ours in the tatler family he is an amazing amazing man based out of hong kong we've been joking about this for a long time um i think i think actually i think it's actually nigel that owns one of these no i yes. actually own one in, in many different colors <laughs> <laughs> what do you wear inside them though nothing nothing no. <laughs> nothing, nothing apparently you just okay. keep your clock. <laughs> <laughs> Next question from Shirin Escarcha. How do you, Jeremy and Pia, motivate each other to achieve both of your goals? Oh, okay. So 
Um, what I love about Jeremy is that he's always pushing me and encouraging me to do better. And then every time I come to him with an idea or good news, he's always as excited as me or sometimes even more excited. So I'll say, like, babe, guess what? Like, um, I got this deal or this just came in. And then he'll be even more excited and then we'll talk about it. And it just feels so good to share it with someone. And then when you have a partner who's excited and happy for you and he pushes you to keep going, that really just gives me the fuel to um, continue with what I do. Um, I love that that um, he's always pushing me to do my best. And the same with him. I'm always so excited whenever he comes to me with some news or good news or whatever. Um, and I think that's really important in a relationship that we should be able to motivate each other. Um, with Jeremy and I, I think we're both kind of like alpha types. So, um, but then we don't, we're not competitive towards each other. That's an important thing like you should learn how to balance even though i want to go at a hundred percent he wants to go at a hundred percent too we're going in the same direction and we're not trying to i mean we we know what we want from each other and um we're not competitive and we're not trying to kind of one up each other and that's i think that's very important especially if both of you are um go-getters or kind of like us so, yeah. yeah jerry uh, chime in yeah, I mean, I, I couldn't, I couldn't say it better myself. I think it, it starts from a foundation of, of love and respect and being able to communicate. And, you know, when, when Pia tells me her dreams and her ambitions, just knowing that whatever she wants to do, I'll, I'll be behind her and I'll be supporting her. And I think, I think Nigel, Nigel said it the best and then articulated it in the shoot the best. That's, um, we're coming at it at a, at the same level and there's this mutual respect. And the idea is that there are days when Pia's coming forward and I'm really inspired and motivated by what she's doing. And so I get behind her and I get that momentum. And then there are days where I'm doing the same and, and then she does the same. So it's really just being able to share those moments with each other and uh, and, and and respect it and be happy for each other. And, uh, you know, even though what you may see on social media is, is uh, you know, is always positive and there's always good things out there. You know, yeah. there are when, you know, when I'm struggling and, and she really helps me get through those and vice versa. And that's that's just as important as, as celebrating the, the, the win. Great. Great, great answers, guys. For Nigel from Camila Cevalios, what is the best way to learn how to take pictures? <laughs> um, <laughs> a million dollar question, I guess. But um, ultimately, look, I think we, we live in a very, very special, unique time where everybody in the world, it seems, at least over a, you know, one and a half billion people have a camera on their phone or yeah. you can even flip that and say you have a phone on your camera because quite frankly, these days they're almost used as cameras more than phones. Um, but um, you know, one, the wonderful thing that that's done is enabled everybody to experiment with photography in a way that we've never seen before. And oh. on a global scale, it's like giving children a pencil um, for the first time ever so that they have the opportunity to draw, they have the opportunity to write. And without doing so, they would never have an idea or an understanding. And so what I say to people is just go out there and shoot. Don't think that, oh, I don't have a camera, a real camera, and I, I can't take pictures. You know, photography is about expression, and it's about capturing emotion and a narrative and a story. Um, like any great picture, like any great piece of art, it isn't just about the sculpture, it isn't just about the process, but it's about what, how it makes people react and feel. So whenever you take a picture, think about how it makes you feel. And, you know, when you look at the story we just took of Pierre or any of the covers I've shot for Tatler, that there's an emotion there. There's, a, there's something that you, you're taken somewhere. There's a story. Um, and, and you don't have to necessarily like the story. And not everyone has to love it. Being polarizing is just as important often. And the hard stories are often as good as the good stories. And, you know, it's and in making that change. So always try and think outside the box and tell a story. Even if you're looking at the sky, look at the sky and say, what is the sky telling me right now? Is it dark and moody? Is it, a, is it blue? Is it upbeat? Is it sunny and happy? You know, it, there are emotions everywhere and in everything. And you have to read that and try and tell that story in your pictures. Well said. Um, next question. For An from Annika Balajadia. Pia, when, you, when did you realize you wanted to join a pageant? Okay, so um, Miss Universe is very big here in the Philippines. And um, even when I was a kid, 
our world would stop whenever Miss Universe would be on TV. So um, I've always had it at the back of my mind, but it felt like a dream that I could never achieve. You know how like when you're a kid and you dream of being an astronaut, it's a nice dream, but I don't know if it will happen for real. So it was kind of like that for me. Um, what happened was in 2012, I was just walking around the mall and then I got scouted there by my now manager, Jonas. He saw me and asked me if I wanted to start training for Bidibini Filipinas. And I said, yes, right away. And apparently the first thing I said after that was, um, well, it was in Tagalog, but translated to English. The first thing I said was, wow, I'm finally gonna do something with my life. <laughs> apparently that's the first thing I said. So um, ever since that day, I've just been, um, training and um, been focusing and um, putting my time really into preparing. So I don't think there was a day really. It was more of the day somebody saw the potential in me and asked me if I wanted to join. I've always wanted to join, but just nobody ever asked me. So yeah. That's great. <laughs> for Pia and JJ, <laughs> JJ, if you could switch your bodies and roles for a day, what would be the most important thing each of you would do? <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> you wanna, you wanna. I was about to pass that one to you. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, if I could switch my body and roll, what was the most important thing each of you would do? I mean, to be honest, I would just, I would continue doing what Pia does uh, in terms of using the platform that she has to talk about things that really matter. You know, a lot of people know her background and her success within pageantry and beauty queens and really when you have an audience like the one that she does you can talk about anything and she voluntarily decides to talk about things that matter whether it's UNAIDS or raising awareness for WWF or other causes that are actually important um, I've always respected her for doing that so I think I would uh, continue continue in doing something like that and, and continue using the platform in the way she does to to put out messages of good yeah um, what I would do is I want to know his fitness secrets and why he eats so much and never gets big. Because whenever I'm with Jeremy, like he loves to eat, like don't get it wrong, guys, like to achieve the body. And I used to think like uh, Jer Jeremy must not eat, so I should probably shouldn't eat either. <laughs> so, like on a date, you know, but um, he eats. And then, but what I want to learn is how to find that right balance of taking care of yourself but not depriving yourself. So. If I could switch roles with him for a day, I would learn all the secrets. Thank you, Emil, for that question. Next question, do we have more questions? From Dea Yap, was there ever a point, Pia, in your life that you wanted to give up? Uh, I, no, no, I, there was never a time where I wanted to give up, but there were times where I felt really down. And the thing about hitting rock bottom is there's no other way but to go up. So it's actually a good thing um, because you have nothing else to lose. Um, so um, I don't think there was ever a time where I really wanted to give up. There were moments where it became really difficult, but um, I mean, I think that that should be the motto, right? Never give up, never give up on your dreams and just keep going. Great. Next question, we have a question still? Or is that the last question? Oh, one more. Laura Slater, what inspired you, Nigel, to get into photography? What is your proudest photography achievement? The cover. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> my, 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 whatever I shoot tomorrow. Um, <laughs> but um, well, I mean, so, I mean, just in, in, a, in a in a nutshell, you know, photography was something that I it wasn't necessarily my dream to become a photographer. Um, in fact, I I just really like being creative one way or the other and uh, art in general whether it was sculpture metalwork woodwork um and i i've actually studied pattern cutting tailoring weaving and fashion design as a, as a young man and um got photography was a hobby of mine and it, it, i got into photography through modeling which i had no idea that i was going to be, do any kind of modeling but a very long time ago people when i was about 100 pounds lighter and i had hair like jeremy's um <laughs> I, I did a bit of modeling can you believe it and um but i learned about what photographers could do and and what a career a photographer could have and thought well that looks like lots and lots of fun um and so got into photography then but that was back in the late you know late 80s early 90s um and you know the world of photography changed now it's digital back then it was film 
Um, yeah. But that was, it was watching and seeing the creative process that I loved. And I think that, you know, what one needs to do to be fulfilled isn't necessarily, say, photography or one thing or another. It's about finding a creative path. It's about finding a release for your creativity. And there are so many ways to do so. And one of the things I recommend young photographers do, and going back to the causes out there and, the fa and all the different charities, is that there are so many charities that need their story to be told. And there is nothing yeah. more powerful than using photography, than using imagery, than using video um, to tell that story. Because words can wax poetic and you can describe things and make things sound one way or the other. But with an image, you allow the viewer to make their mind up very quickly and succinctly because what they see is the truth and they can make their mind up. They either like it or they don't. They want to make, they want to move, they want to donate, volunteer, advocate. So young photographers out there, find a cause that's dear to your heart, that's important for you, go out, volunteer, tell that story, tell their story, tell your story and make the world a better place and make change with your imagery and with your content. And that is the most powerful thing you can do. And, and you, that will really inspire you as a photographer as well. Well said. Um, I think this is the last question. In this time of pandemic, what advice can you, Jeremy, give us in the travel industry? Yeah, it's uh, it's challenging. There's there's no doubt. I think first and foremost, the the only thing that, that matters is to make sure that uh, if you are starting to think about bringing travel back to your hotel or to your country, is to make sure that it's safe, that you have the right uh, technical protocols, you have the right health protocols, you're set up to be able to handle changes. I think people are anticipating when freedom of movement comes back, uh, it won't be anywhere near the scale it was before, but it could lead to increases in in coronavirus, uh, I think we saw in the last year or so that we're seeing, uh, you know, rapid rapid growth of the virus in in Africa, in uh, certain parts of the Middle East, in some of the areas, uh, certainly in Brazil, where uh, there were perhaps less stringent uh, restriction rules. And so, I think fundamentally, we need to understand that we probably have a longer runway of things being challenging than we initially thought in the travel industry. Uh, and then the main focus should be that when when you do start to promote tourism and, and try to bring it back, that you have all the health protocols uh, in place. Uh, travel the resilient industry. Um, you know, we've been through challenges like this before. We will come back from it. I think there's mm -hmm. there's no people inherently uh, realize the value of travel and the importance of travel. Um, I'm, I'm hoping it'll just come back in a in a stronger way. It'll just take a little bit of time. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I'm glad you guys. We had so much wisdom and encouragement from you guys, and the love all around. Um, Nigel, would you give some parting words for our viewers? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you very, very much for, for listening and for caring and for being so supportive. Um, I, I look forward to help to continuing to tell this love story of this, this beautiful couple who are wonderful people and I'm very proud to call my friends um, and, um, and, and everybody for supporting Tatler Magazine because Tatler has been a great friend to me uh, as has Anton become a dear personal friend, um, you know, and, and, and what wonderful people in the Philippines. So I look forward to continuing this conversation and to continue to showcase love stories um, and stories of importance uh, through Tatler and with my friends. So thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Thank you, Nigel. Pia? Oh, well, I want to say thank you to you, Anton, for um, allowing us to be on the cover of the magazine. I want to invite everyone to get a copy when you can. Um, also, Nigel, thank you so much for taking those beautiful photos of me and Jeremy. And um, I'm so happy that finally we're able to talk about our relationship openly. Um, I'm, I have to be honest, like I was kind of nervous about it at the beginning because um, just like it's been a while and um and this is the first time also that we're doing this um with an audience so uh, i'm happy to see that everybody's been so supportive so thank you so much and um yeah maraming maraming salamat po maraming salamat well said jeremy yeah i mean again just continuing the thank yous really um obviously for you and tatler very proud to be part of the family as a a supporter with with travel um, for all the, all, all the Tatler editions, but particularly you, Anton. So, so thank you so much for that. Uh, I think more more for me, really, on a, on a wider level with, with the Philippines in general and, and Filipinos, a massive massive thank you because you guys, uh, as a nation, have been so supportive of me since the very very beginning. Um, you know, the the first time we worked with the tourism board 
the response we got was amazing. Um, I have an amazing friend and partner in in Manila, Ren Sapatan, who who runs uh, the beautiful destinations set up out of there and is, is helping everything with the partnership with the tourism board. So on the one hand, massive thank you to everyone for all the support you've given Pia and I. Uh, it, it means a huge amount. And the second uh, massive thank you, of course, to to the tourism board. And we're looking forward to coming back and uh, continuing to tell the story of your amazing country and hopefully get more tourists to come back to the Philippines very soon. Thank you very much. I think we, we learned to celebrate love and life from all of you guys. And thank you so much for the, all the encouragement. And it's also our pleasure, Nigel, Jeremy, Pia, for you coming out in our magazine. It's our pleasure as well. Um, thank you so much for joining us here at Tatler Talks. Hope you all enjoyed and took in so much. I did, surely did. Don't forget to download the Tatler issue. It's free on Magster. And very important, the print Print is Alive edition. It will be available in bookstores on June 15 onward. Thank you to the Tatler team behind this who's been used to see all the fantastic videos and photos. They did a great job. Till the next time, thank you again, Nigel, Pia, Jeremy. Love you guys. Have a good day where you are. Your days are starting. Our day is about to end soon, but good night and good morning for you, and God bless you. See you soon and speak soon. Thanks, Anton. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you.